Hello, everyone. Welcome again to the One World Common to Turks on Words seminar. Um, our speaker for today is uh, Gwenael Richom from the University of Montpellier, and he will speak about sets of indefinitely desubstitutable words. Okay, thanks for uh, the introduction. Hello, everybody. Um, it's also thanks uh, for the organizers to invite me and to also for organizing this regular seminar. So um, my talk is about set of right infinite words that can be characterized from a set of substitutions uh, using only infinitely many substitutions over the given set of substitutions and no other constraints on the sequence of this substitution. Uh, this was already the subject of my talk at the conference words in 2019 at Loboro. But I will present a few additional results, especially on some families of epistemic words. Also, I will present the ideas in a different way. So I start this talk with a, a simple example to explain the process of infinite distributions and that it is considered here and to introduce the main notion of the talk. So the, this example is the, the well-known example of uh, infinite uh, binary balanced words. So maybe I have to record the definition very quickly. So an infinite word or word finite or infinite uh, W is balanced if uh, given any factors U and V of same length, uh, the number of each, uh, of occurrences of each letter in the two words differ by not one. Um, these words are very well known, the most uh, known in um, for these words are the human words that are the periodic words and the more celebrated one is the five energy word that everybody knows I, I assume. There is also some periodic words among uh, balanced words. It's periodic words are repetitions of conjugates of finite uh, standard words. Here example, if you consider the standard word ABAB -A -A and I consider the finite repetition, but I start the repetition from the suffix AB until we obtain this conjugate and the infinite repetition of this conjugate, which is balanced. And among balanced words, in addition to aperiodic words and periodic words, there is also some skew words that are ultimately periodic. The simplest one is uh, the first one here, which is a, um, a word containing only one B. And the other examples given here are, can be obtained from the first one applying some morphism. Uh, here are the simple morphism that uh, maps uh, A to AB and B to A. Uh, this morphism is applied once here and twice more to obtain this third example. So this is the, the, the family of uh, this example. And what I want to do is to obtain a, a characterization with the desubstitutions of uh, this uh, family. So I consider first uh, an infinite balance, infinite word. I call it uh, W1. What, can, what I can do first is to apply the definition of balanceness and see that uh, not one of the two factors, A, A or B, B, is not a factor of W1. And depending on the first letter of W1 and the fact that B, B or A, A does not, con is not contained in W1, we can see very quickly that W1 can be decomposed in one of the four following manners. Uh, for instance, if uh, you consider that BB is not contained in the, in the balance word W1, um, and A is the first letter, then each occurrence of B is preceded by an A, and so we obtain the decomposition of W1 over the sets of, set of the two words A and AB. And similarly, we obtain the of the other decomposition. Now we can see this decomposition using a morphism or substitution. Uh, in this talk, a substitution means only a non erasing morphism. And uh, the first morphism we can consider it is for the first line, for, for the first decomposition. We consider the word A and we want to distribute it uh, in the decomposition. Uh, it on a letter, and so we associate and construct the morphism LA that maps A to AA, and to distribute the word AB, I map 
with A, a the, word, the letter B to AB. So it is immediate that uh, the decomposition I obtained just before means that W1 is the image of a second word W2 by a cis morphism A. a. Uh, on the second line, considering the decomposition of ABB, we can consider the morphism RB that maps A to AB, the first word of the decomposition, and B to to be the second word of decomposition. And thus we see that W1 is the image of a second, or a second word W2 with, um, by this uh, morphism RB. And exchanging the rules of A and B, we can see that uh, in the two next uh, decomposition, W1 is also the image of a morphism by a single pole morphism, which is RA and RLB here, of a word W2. This is the first step of the word of the decomposition, and, and what we have obtained is just that W1 is the image of W2, a new world with uh, the morphism considered in the in, in the relation, which is one of the four morphisms I have just introduced. So we obtain this result. Uh, the next step is to show which uh, some methods that very uh, known that uh, the word W2 is in actually it is in balanced. So if W2 is balanced, we can apply the same substitution as before, and we obtain that W2 is the image of a word W3 uh, under the image of uh, one of the four morphisms I've introduced before. And once again, W3 is balanced. So we can find a word WK4, for which W3 is the image by one of the four morphisms and W4 is balanced and so on. So we can find an infinite set of uh, right infinite word WI over the set of the binary alphabet AB, such so that at uh, each step, the word WI is the image of WI plus one by the morphism FI, which is one of the four morphisms I've introduced. And of course, the first step, first uh, word of the decomposition is the word WI considered as a starting point. Um, so here is the, the kind of characterization I want to have. I want to, to show that W is balanced if and if we have this, re, this kind of uh, desubstitution, infinite desubstitution. And for to continue the talk, I need to introduce some uh, definitions. For these definitions, I consider set S of substitutions, the set can be finite or infinite, and uh, record that substitution means just non-everything endomorphism. Uh, I say that it is endomorphism since the alphabet of the, is the same for the starting uh, word and the image of the word. Uh, the first definition is the notion of limit point introduced by Arnaud Mizotani Selami in 2014, which means exactly what we have here. But instead that we start fixing the sequence of substitutions and we say that W is a limit point of the sequence of substitutions. If uh, there exists a set of substituted words as we have just before, meaning that we have the two relations which, which are just rewritten, we're right in here. And the second definition I will use in this talk is the notion of stable set of uh, S, where S is still a set of substitution I've considered, which is nothing else than the set of all limit points of sequences in the, with values in, uh, in S. And I will denote uh, this stable set by stab of S. And so using this definition, I can say that a word, if a word W is balanced, then it is a limit point of a sequence of substitutions taken into this uh, set of four morphisms here. But we can also say that uh, W is balanced. If W is balanced, then W is, belongs to the status set of the four morphisms. And now what I want to do is to, to prove the converse holds. So I want to prove that the word W belongs to the stable set, then W is balanced. So I start uh, fixing the, the sequence of distributions and saying that W is a limit point of this sequence of distributions. 
And the first case is a case where in the sequence of distributions, the, there is infinitely many occurrences of elements of uh, LA or many infinitely many occurrences of LA and simultaneously infinitely many occurrences of elements of LB or many occurrences of RB. And in this case, we are in the well-known case of just of German words. That is, we are in the case of a periodic balance. So we have done the job W with balance. The second case is the case where in the sequence of substitutions, we have only uh, occurrences of LA and RA. Then it is not difficult to see that uh, uh, the word W is necessarily the, um, okay, the, the ultimate, the, the periodic word obtained by infinite concatenation of A or any word containing exactly one occurrence of B. And these words are balanced. This is a particular case of uh, this second case. In the more general case, we can consider the, that S contains finitely many elements of uh, the morphisms LB and RB. This means that W is the image of uh, word W prime with uh, F uh, compositions of the four morphisms here and W prime uh, a word that uh, can be infinitely distributed uh, using a sequence of substitutions satisfying the condition of the case 2.1. And here there is something interesting that we have to, to use. It is that the fact that the four morphisms that I have introduced before preserve the balance property. I mean that uh, the image of any balanced word is also balanced. And as a consequence, since W prime is balanced, the word W is balanced. And there is one remaining case is to prove that any element of the stable set here is balanced. It is the symmetric case of the second case. Here it changes the rule of, a, rule of a, the letters A and the letter B. Uh, and in this case, uh, that we can do exactly the same and uh, we have uh, the same um, conclusion, which is that the word W is balanced. So what we have proof until now, it is that the set of uh, infinite binary balance words is exactly the stable set of uh, the set of substitutions of the four substitution introduced before. So uh, now I can introduce you the main questions that we discussed in the rest of the talk. The first, uh, which is the main one, it, but I will treat it on, only at the end of the talk, it is, well, for which combinatorial properties, for which uh, known families of combinatorial words, does we can get a similar char characterization as a stable set? And I will give many examples, uh, essentially an example of words around balanced words or strumming words and some subfamilies and families of uh, efficient words and subfamilies. A second question that can be asked and then I will consider it is, well, what can be said on the structure of, the st of a stable state uh, when we give a stable, or more precisely on the stable set of a given set S of substitutions. And for many, many people, maybe one question is, well, what is the link with SIDCT, which is another notion that maybe you know about uh, and which is related to this substitution? And maybe I, have, I will have time or so to explain that what, uh, why is this uh, property preserving morphisms are important in this process, in this context. So I'll start with the structural aspects. The, the first structural aspect is maybe to, to understand uh, the notion of stable set as a, as a generalization of fixed point of morphisms. Um, if X is a stable set, then given any substitution F of the set of substitutions that, uh, is, that needs, that, that uh, defines stable set, we can see that uh, uh, 
any word obtained by this substitution of f must be also an element of the stable set. So we can see that x is the union of all the set f of x, where f is one of the substitution. And moreover, it is not, not only we have this relation, but also we can see that the stable set of a given set of substitutions is a greater set that, uh, verifies, that satisfies the, this relation. So we can see in one way that uh, the, the, the set is fixed by the set of uh, morphisms. Uh, this can be seen also in a special case, which is was already, uh, uh, which is a result of already proved by Gerlach in 2010, which is in the case where we have only one substitution. So in this case, we can see that W um, belongs to the stable set of these substitutions. If only if W is a fixed point of one power of uh, the substitution. Here is an example to illustrate uh, this proposition. Maybe, maybe it is not very the best example I could have given, but I will need this example later. It is not the best, best because uh, the, all elements of the stable set I give here are uh, actually a fixed point of uh, F and uh, we have no uh, power needed here except uh, the one power. So this morphism maps A to AB and B to B and to understand how acts the morphism, it is a cyclic word where, and the image of AB is ABAB. So when we consider uh, the limit of uh, the successive image of uh, A iterating the morphism F, we obtain the, the word AB, ABAB and so on. And with this morphism, B is also fixed. So we can see that any element word uh, obtained by fixing uh, a power of B and just after having the periodic word AB and so on, uh, we have an element which is uh, 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 a fixed point of F, but it is also an element of, stab of the stable set because we can desubstitute it and obtain an element which is exactly on the same form. And additional, additionally, we have to, to consider the, the periodic world uh, with period B. Okay. This is first uh, social aspect I will have to discuss. So the second aspect is to, to come to the notion of acidicity. Before I record some um, notation, so some pre precise definition. Let me record some historical uh, notion for, for respect. The notion of uh, acidicity was introduced, the terminology was introduced in, by Sebastian Ferrazzi in 1996. And S meaning substitution, I will take in this, this talk um, sometimes a different notion for S we will see in the moment. And uh, uh, the main result uh, Sebastian Ferrazzi obtained is that the uh, uniformly minim minimal symbolic system with sub affine factor complexity are acidic for a finite set of substitutions. Uh, what I have to, to, to mention here is that the notion was first introduced in the notion of a, a dynamical system and not in finite world, but the notion can be applied also for a right infinite world. Second aspect, uh, the, the notion of uh, the, the work of Ferrandin was uh, considered in the con context of the notion of acidic conjecture, which uh, in the conjecture that there exists a con can exist a condition C that any infinite world or infinite uh, minimal symbol system uh, have an ambus linear factor of complexity. If and if it is acidic, we'll see in one more moment that it is related to the notion of uh, stable sets and satisfy the condition C. And the difference between the SID conjecture and the context of uh, many of works concerning SID city is that in this talk, I try to do things without any condition C. So SID city uh, occur in many works now and in, in a survey in 2014, Liberté and David de Croix uh, says, uh, said that expansions of acidic nature have now proved their efficiency for yielding convenient descriptions for highly structured symbolic dynamic systems. And they also say that an acidic system is a system that can be indefinitely distributed, but uh, the distribution 
quite similar to what I do before, but it is also, there is also a, a slight difference. Uh, and indeed, we can find many interesting examples of aesthetic words in the literature, morphic words, German words, and so on. And uh, there is many, many that I have not cited. Uh, one interesting to, to note is that acidicity for many of these words is only a necessary condition, and there, was, there is often uh, an additional condition on the sequence of substitution. Once again, I, I try to do things here in this talk without this additional condition. So here is a, a more precise definition of acidicity. The next fitting word is, uh, I would say, substitutive addict instead of s addict. Uh, if there exists a sequence of uh, substitutions, uh, here the substitution may be not exactly endomorphisms. And there is a sequence of letters such that W is the limit of the inverse product sigma one to sigma n applied to the letter n when n tends to the infinity. And in this context, the sequence sigma n is called a directed sequence. Now, why did I consider the notion substitutive addict instead of s addict? It is because when I will say s addict, s will be will denote the not the, the set of substitutions that I consider to to construct the word. Uh, and as I already done before, you have to remark that uh, the cardinalities of alphabet in the definition may not be bounded contrary, contrary to what happens in my definition of a stable set, where the alphabet is fixed for all the, and is the same for all substitutions. So the first thing I would like to, to, to give you is to say that uh, uh, Sadicity is a necessary condition for a word W to be an element of a stable set. Uh, first case where it is quite obvious, it is a case where we consider W, which is uh, Sadic, and it is a limit of uh, a set, a sequence of a, of a product of substitution that I to a letter as here. And we also assume that uh, the following limits exist. And these limits are the same as in the definition of sigma one of W, except that uh, we start the product at uh, the substitution sigma K. Um, and if we have, if, the, if all these limits exist, it is quite immediate that uh, we, the word W can be indefinitely distributed in the sense of a stable set that is WK is the image of uh, the next word WK plus one, by the morphism sigma k. But the limit here may not exist, and it is very easy to have an example of that. If you consider the morphism that maps A to A and B also to A, and morphism G that maps A to B, B, and B to A, A, then the limit of, uh, the, of FG or to the power n to A is the limit of F of a power B of a power A, which is also a power of, of A, and the limit it is a periodic word with period A. And, but when we consider the intermediate pro limit here, that the limit may not exist because uh, the power of G applied to A are alternative a power of B and a power of A. So the limit does not exist. Nevertheless, uh, in the context of stable set, we can see that the periodic world with period A is, can be distributed to itself by the morphism F. It can be also distributed by the morphism G to the period where, periodic world B omega, and B omega can be distributed to the world A omega. This shows that A omega can be indefinitely distributed by using the two morphism F and G, essentially G, at the, uh, the ultimate periodicity. So, we ex um, although the, 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 the limit does not exist, we have the following proposition. Even any set of substitutions, uh, if a word W is S addict, then W belongs to stable set. And the proof is quite rather technical, and uh, just what we have to do is to construct a suitable distributed words, so the word WK, which has not the limit here, 
uh, but satisfying the sequence of words that satisfy the relation of the stable set. Um, let me mention that the converse of the converse of proposition does not hold. If you were W belong to a stable set of a given set of substitutions, it may not be SADIC. The, the, this can be shown using the example I used before. The stable set, I have already said it, of uh, the set of uh, the set of the substitution uh, here is uh, the following set. And if we consider the the idic word using this substitution, there is only one which is the periodic word with period A B. And so there is some words that are that belong to table set but that are not adic. Um, I would like to have a relation, a more exact relation between stable set and um, SADCT. And for that, I will be, I will have to, to have some more precise, more specific definition using not the entire set of substitutions, but a sequence of substitutions. So I fix a sequence of substitutions and I call stabs of S, the set of infinite words that can be indefinitely best substituted with this directive second S, so with this, these relations. I will also need a similar set, but not of infinite words, but of non-empty infinite words, finite words. So they are the, the, these finite words have the same relation, but they are, they are finite instead of being infinite. And I denote this set, statfin of this sequence, of the sequence S of two substitutions. And finally, I need to express a relation between a city and a stable set. Uh, I will need to, to set adic of S, which is a set of S adic infinite words with this directive sequence S. And we have this relation, the stable set, the, the set of infinite words that can be indefinitely destituted with a second S is a set of all words that I can obtain uh, considering comp infinite composition uh, concatenations of uh, non-infinite non words that can be indefinitely substituted with this directive sequence, plus some the, the words that uh, the, the adic uh, words uh, preceded by one word in statfin of S. Uh, I will not prove this this proposition, which can be maybe since quite natural. I usually select it with a, with an example, which is the previous example still uh, considered. So the stable set I already said uh, of F is the stable set of the infinite sequence of substitution F omega. And it is so the constituted with the infinite world B omega and all the world obtained by concatenation of a sequence of B plus the adic words A, B, uh, period decrease the period A, B. And we can verify these relations since the, the infinite word that can be uh, the infinity distributed uh, amongst infi uh, finite words are the words constituted with only uh, B. And the only adic uh, word is the word AB omega, which, has, which was already said in the previous uh, slide. Um, this proposition uh, can be simplified in one easy example. It is the case where the set stab in fin of S is empty, and we have the equality between the stable set and the set of adic words. Uh, and so there is some natural, so the converse not does not own. So we can consider for that the morphism LA introduced at the beginning of the talk, so map A to A and B to AB. You can see that uh, the set of uh, finite words that can be indefinitely distributed are the set of all powers of A, while uh, the stable set contains only the periodic word uh, with period A, and this word is also adic. Since we can see that uh, the limit of uh, LA to the power of N of B, which is the limit of A N to A to the power N B is uh, this word A omega. This correlation, uh, sorry. 
Uh, another example of uh, cases where we have a gravity between stable sets and addicity, addict set, is a case of infinite binary balance world, where we can see that the stable set we have already characterized in this talk corresponds exactly to a set of addict words with some exactly some similar streaks as in this example here, because we can we have the stable set is a set of human world plus a new of uh, all image by uh, a morphism, which is a composition of uh, finite uh, uh, elements of uh, this set to one of the worlds here. Yeah. So there is some natural question arising from uh, this uh, corollary, which is and follows uh, the remark that given a set S of substitution, one can, can decide whether the set uh, stop fin of S is empty for all sequences of substitution. The main reason if, uh, is that if sub fin of S is not empty, there exists a later A and suffix X prime of S, such that A belongs to the set uh, of a finite words that can be indefinitely distributed using the sequence S prime. So we have just to consider later and the distribution can be uh, represented by a finite graph and it is easy to determine whether there is a, a pass, an infinite pass in the, in the graph. Uh, I have some open problems that maybe interest you. First question is, the problem is, can we decide whether the stable set of a sequence of substitution is exactly the set of uh, addict words? Uh, what, is, what can be said in the general case? Another open problem is, well, can we decide whether uh, given a set of, uh, whether there, well, so we have a set of substitutions, we know the stable set, and one question is, can, does it do there, does there exist a set S prime of substitutions such that the stable set is a set of addict words, but with a different uh, set of, uh, so this different set of substitution. Uh, for this question, it may be interesting to, to note that the, the problem is not empty, uh, and this can be done using the identity morphism, on a, well, on a set of letters uh, uh, of cardinality added two. Uh, the stable set of uh, this uh, morphism, which is quite basic, it is a, is a set of all right infinite words. And one can prove that there is no set of substitutions such that uh, the, set, the entire set of uh, right infinite words over A correspond exactly to the set of idic words over the set of substitutions. Uh, for those who know about SLC, you may be surprised because you could think to one example of uh, Julien Cassaigne that uh, says that uh, the set of infinite infinite words of, uh, over an alphabet A is a subset of Isaac words. Well, this is, it is a subset, it is not the, the entire set of Isaac words. And in this example, the, the substitutions that are used are defined on an alphabet which is larger than A, and since there, since there is an additional letter L. And so there is no contradiction between the, what I wrote here and this example. So I have ended now the part concerning, concerning the structural aspects. I come to the main question of the talk, which is, well, what, which are the combinatorial families uh, that we already know that are stable sets. Before starting with the first example of German words, uh, I start with a basic property that explains why property preserving morphisms may be important while studying uh, this question. Well, we have already in some sense already said that given a set of substitutions and one particular substitution phi in this set of substitutions, the image of uh, the set of, of, um, of the stable set of, the, of S by phi is a subset of the wall set of, uh, of the set uh, of the stable set. Uh, this can be uh, said uh, on the following way. It can be uh, written uh, on the following way. It means that substitution of S preserve element of S, meaning that any elements of, L of the stable set is a map on another element of the stable set. And 
here follows an example where we use this property to prove that uh, an example uh, family of infinite words is not a stable set. And this family is the, is the, well, the well known family of infinite in binary overlap reverse. Uh, I, I assume that every no, everyone knows uh, this definition, but uh, for who's, 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 who do not need, I recall that overlap words are the words that contain no factors of form alpha u, alpha u, alpha, with not a here, yeah, but alpha is a letter and u is a word. It is known since the work of Turing in 1912 that the of morphisms that preserve overlap words are exactly the word, the morphism mu that maps A to AB and B to AB, the morphism E that exchange the roles of A and B and all the compositions of uh, all these morphisms. So if you could try to show that uh, the set of infinite binary overlap words is a stable set of a set of substitutions and we consider all the morphisms here, we include them in this set uh, the action morphism or the square of the morphisms, which is the identity. And then we can see that all in right infinite words are, uh, so not a star here, but an, an omega, then all right infinite words are the stable set, are in the stable set. And so we, the stable set is not the set of infinite binary of polar words. So it's natural to remove from the set uh, of substitution we want to consider uh, these two morphisms. And even if we consider all the remaining morphisms, we can see that the stable set we obtain is a set contains only two words, which is a tumor word, that is the fixed point of the, uh, the, morph the, the morphism mu, and it's imaged by the exchange morphism. So this is not the entire, the, 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 all the words that are uh, binary of our free words. And so we cannot find uh, a set S shows that uh, the set of infinite binary of every word uh, is a stable set of a, a set of substitutions. So is a, is an example of a, a way of using this, uh, this kind of property, t property morphisms. We'll see on other examples in, uh, in a while. I now consider German words, that is, I record it, uh, a periodic binary balance word. Uh, I already said that the Sturman word is a, a nadic word under over the set of substitution A, 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 B, R, A, and R, B that I introduced and or, or record at the beginning of the talk. And moreover, the Sturman words are the words uh, over the steady set of words that have a dietary sequence, so an infinite sequence of uh, substitution associated containing infinity many elements of uh, this set L, A, R, A, and infinitely many elements of as he said, RBRB. So this well-known condition can be viewed as a concatenation of elements of these two sets, a sets of um, a sequence, uh, a composition of uh, some elements of LARA at least one, and we end with an LB or RB, and or symmetrically we start with a certain number of uh, uh, elements in LBRB and we end with LARA. And here is an example of uh, such a sequence of substitutions. And uh, when we try to, to see under this concatenation of elements, we can see as an alternative way in blue and red uh, uh, marked. Here we have an example, starting elements of the first set following by an element of the second set, first set once again, and second set, and alternatively, we can do this job infinitely often since we have an infinitely many amount of both sets. So, well, this well-known condition can just be formed, just can be reformulated in terms of a stable set. And we have, can say that the word is Germany found if it belongs to the stable set of S, Term where S term is a set of infinite, is the, is the infinite set of substitutions I just defined here. So this is not new, it is just a reformulation of what uh, one previous known uh, result. 
So no, no, the natural question is, well, we have characterized Schumann words using an infinite set. Can we do the same job with a, a finite set? And the answer is no. There does not exist any finite set of substitution such that uh, the set of Schumann words is a, or is a stable set uh, form over this set of substitution. Here is a, uh, I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the scheme of the, of the proof just to show you one another uh, use of the fact that uh, the element of S must preserve the family of the, of the stable set. And so if such a set S exists, any element of S should preserve the family of Schumann will. So to prove that this result, I assume by contradiction that uh, there exists the finite set S of substitution, that the Schumann world is a stable set of S. And so what is known that from this assumption, it is that any element of RS should preserve the family of Schumann world. And unfortunately, the morphisms that preserve Schumann world are well known. This entire set of these morphisms are all the words, uh, all the morphisms that are obtained by concatenation of the morphism LA, LB, RB, and E that are, have been defined before. Okay, so when there is so many relations between this morphism, once are of this, some of, the, of these relations are the following one. And using this relation, we can see that the subset S can be seen as a subset of uh, a concatenation of elements of L, elements of LA, LB, or ARB, plus possibly uh, a, con a composition with uh, the exchange morphism. Now it is important to see that if consider any word W, even can be uh, not determined, so that this is of uh, no importance here. And if we uh, map this word W using first AB and the power of RA and the power of LA, then the word W, the image the, we obtain, start with the prefix A to the power N B. And uh, it is interesting to know that, to, to note that uh, any morphism obtained by concaposition of LA and RA can be uh, on this form, since you have this relation. But now there exist terminals with arbitrary numbers of initial occurrences of A. So there is this power of A here can be arbitrarily long uh, when in Sturman words. And Sturman words can be uh, decomposed uh, over this set. So we, we need to have in the set of Sturman words. Oh, and so in the stable set, we need to have uh, at least one morphism uh, on this form here. But then, since this in here of this morphism on this form maps A to A, we will have A omega in the stable set, which is not possible if we want to, if we, since we have assumed that this stable set is a set of German words, and this word is not German because it is periodic. So we have here one another example of a way to, to prove, to use this, this uh, the fact that uh, the morphism of the stable set preserves the family uh, of, uh, of the stable set, the, the world of the stable set. And uh, all the proofs uh, uh, of all the results on the same kind where I say, when I said, I would say that there is not no finite, finite set S of substitution, so the set of human world is a stable set would be, is indeed on this form. And why more tricky because uh, the, the, the set of strong words of other sets will be, that will be considered are more complicated. So are we now enumerate some cases where uh, we can show that uh, we have some stable set. The first, next example consider uh, subfamilies of German words, which is a set of infinite linear words. I recall that an infinite linear word is a word smaller than all its suffixes, smaller here in the, in res, with respect to the lexicographic order. And we have obtained with the Florence Levy in 2007 a result saying that uh, a German word 
is the linear world if it can be indefinitely decomposed in the sense of a stable set you defined previously with infinitely many occurrences of LA and infinitely many occurrences of R being the dilated sequence. So we can reformulate it, this result exactly as we've done for Chomian words. Uh, we set s uh, this set of morphisms, which is the composition of at least one LA and RB or one R RB with LA. And this result can be reformulated as a word is a linden Chomian word, an infinite word is a linden Chomian word. If in, and if it belongs to the set, to stab, uh, the stable set of this set of uh, morphisms. And so the natural quick next question is, well, can we do this with a finite set? And the answer is no. There is no set, uh, no finite set of substitutions. So just the set of Linden's Turman words is the stable set of this set of substitutions. We have exactly the set, same situation with standard words. Well, um, let me record that uh, infinite standard, what are infinite standard words? Standard words, they are binary words having, having all its left special factors as prefixes and exactly one left special factor of each length. Where, where a left special factor is anywhere the U such that there is at least two factors, AU and BU, with A and B different letters in W. Of course, if, if there is exactly two letters, uh, you cannot have more than two here, two, two extensions. Uh, for standard word, it is well known also that an infinite, an infinite word is standard if only if it is LA, LB, RD, and each morphism LA and LB occurs infinitely often in the sequence. And we are in here in the in the, in the, in the case where LAB, LA, LAB, LAB words are exactly the set of, uh, um, exactly the stable set obtained with these two morphisms. And so we can do the same job uh, previously with uh, German words and infinite linear German words. And we can set uh, this, consider this set of, uh, uh, set this infinite set of substitutions, and then we can, this property can be rephrased as the following way. The set of infinite standard word is a stable set of this set of substitutions. And once again, the set of uh, this set of standard word is not the stable set of any finite set of substitutions. From a standard word, we can remove one part of the definition, this part of having exactly one less spatial factor and skipping just the condition that all its less spatial factors are prefixes. And then we'll take the definition of LFT words as Gabriele Fitchi defined them in 2011. And this that words having all its less spatial factors as prefixes. These words are mainly standard words in the binary cases, but uh, and that may have, uh, also exist. May also exist some um, other periodic words in the set. For this set of words, we can do the same job as we did it for balanced words before. If we consider uh, uh, LFP words, they can connect, cannot connect both A, A and B, B as factors because uh, this would imply that A and B would be prefixes simultaneously, which is not the case. And moreover, if A, A is a factor, W must start with the letter R, A. Then we can see that W should be a deceptive, uh, uh, the image of a word W prime by the morphism, by one of the morphism L, A and L, B. I am here in the binary cases. I would consider the case of uh, over a large alphabet after. And so we can, uh, each show that the word W prime is LFP, so maybe the, the, the less, uh, the more difficult part of the, uh, of the proof, which is not very difficult at all. And this is due to the fact that LA and LB preserve left special factors. And then we can show by iteration, by um, uh, iteration that W belongs to the stable set of LA and LB. And so, 
as the converse also proves, exactly in the same way we obtain the fact that uh, balanced words are a stable set of words, we can show that uh, the set of uh, LSP words in the binary case uh, is the stable set of these two uh, morphisms LA and, and LB. Uh, in 2017, uh, I proved that uh, we cannot, have, yeah, we have a situation quite difficult from German world, infinite to Indian German world and standard world, since we can prove that there exists not, when you consider an alphabet of containing at least three letters, we cannot find any um, substitution, a set of substitutions. So, oh, sorry, so this is what I would try to explain is that uh, the, the last part of, the, of, this, uh, of this result, which is that there is no set S, such so as the set of uh, so LSP words of an, uh, an alphabet containing at least three letters, is uh, the set of, um, is a stable set, not S, but the stable set of S. And the, the proof uh, use the fact that uh, uh, we know that uh, the morphisms that preserve the LSP infinite words. Uh, instead of that, uh, as this is very often do in some other works, uh, we can find a set of uh, LS, uh, of substitutions that the set of all LSP words uh, belongs to the stable set of this set of substitutions. The set is finite, but uh, not all elements of the stable set are LSP words, and there exists a characterization of the stable set uh, of directed sequences that uh, uh, allow to have. Um, um, LSP words. So I have ended with uh, on the previous side with uh, binary words. I now end with the case of uh, epistemic words. Uh, epistemic words were introduced by Grube, Justin, and Piero in 2001 as a generation of German words on arbitrary alphabets. They have many characteristic properties. For instance, there are infinite words having almost one right spatial factor of its length, and there are the set of factors disclosed under mirror image. Um, in the 2007, I proved a balanced generation of that these words have a generated, uh, have a balanced local, local balance property using, and I will just say that using this. this, this, uh, this uh, the, the substitution property of epistemic words that, uh, that exist and that are not defined, but the way of uh, proving it uh, is exactly the process uh, used in the notion of stable set. So more precisely, uh, there exists a substitution a characterization of, of uh, epistemic words obtained by Justin Pierrot in 2002 using a generalization of the morphism L that I used at the beginning of the, the, of the talk on two letters, and here we have the generation arbitrary alphabet. The one letter is fixed, and the order for the order image of the for the image of the order letters, we place an alpha uh, before the, the other letters for and the L morphism, and for the R morphism, we place an alpha after the last letter. And the characterization of Justin Pirillo can be transformed to the following statement, which is that epistemic words are exactly the recurrent element of the stable set of uh, all the substitutions uh, L and R. And this, this, this uh, important to note is that uh, there is only a finite uh, number of uh, uh, substitution of this form. But this way of, of characterization may be not completely satisfying. Uh, uh, and interesting because we have this condition and so we can ask for characterization of a specific words using the stable set, but without another uh, additional uh, hypothesis. And um, this can be done contracting the, once again, the, 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 the sequence of the substitution and observing that in any infinite, any infinite distributions of a recurrent element of uh, the set, the stable set, uh, so considering any epistemic words, there must exist infinitely many occurrences of an morphism. And so we can see that the set of epistemic words is exactly the stable set of this uh, set of uh, uh, substitution obtained by composition of R morphism plus one L morphism. But this set 
is infinite. And so the next question is, can we do this with a finite set of uh, substitutions? And the answer is no. There is no finite set of substitutions that the set of epistromian world is the stable set of S. And to prove this proposition, we need the, to connect, to know the morphisms that preserve epistromian world that as far as I know, was not known uh, until uh, recently. The, here, the characterization I obtained, uh, which is not very surprising. We have a morphism preserve epistemian world, epistemian world. If only if it is a, a, a composition of uh, L morphisms, R morphisms, permutations, it is easy to show that this morphism preserve epistemian world using the characterization of uh, Justin and Perio uh, that I've already previously uh, mentioned. And there is also one, uh, some kind of stupid morphisms uh, that maps any letters, but also any finite words to a uh, power of A. And so any image of, uh, the image of any word is the, is uh, the word, uh, the periodic word with uh, period A, and then, uh, which is the specimen. So I know, since I now uh, have only one, um, slides uh, of which can contain, which is some subfamilies of epistemian world, we can show that uh, the set of standard epistemian world uh, can be is a stable set of finite sets. We can show that uh, the set of strict epistemian words will correspond to the set of unworthy words is the stable set of an infinite set of substitutions, but not the stable set of a finite set of substitutions. And we can do the same for a, a strict epistemian words. Uh, and which is, uh, and obtain that uh, there is a, this set of words is stable set of uh, epistemian of um, infinite set of substitution, but we see there is no stable set, uh, there is no set of substitution, no finite set of substitution, such that uh, this set of uh, words is a stable set of substitution. Okay, so let me conclude. Uh, the main study problem I consider it is, well, for which known families of words does there exist set of S of substitution and is uh, a survey of the result I mentioned in the talk. Um, and the question I have now, it is, well, do you know any other example? I have probably forgotten some, some, some known families of which will have exactly the same properties. Uh, it is maybe English to, to, to meant to show that all the characterization use uh, in some way the morphism L or the morphism R. And maybe there is other um, characterization using other morphisms. Uh, another remark uh, to conclude, it is that for each uh, of the precious family that I considered, there exists characterization when I consider only infinite sets, uh, the, the characterization obtained using this infinite set is quite artificial uh, since we have a, maybe a more natural uh, way to, to, to obtain the characterization with the characterization concerning the form of the directed sequences that bring some more information. Uh, so maybe we can should prefer to, to have a characterization of these uh, sequences with uh, some words or with, which happen in many, many uh, uh, in many ways, in some aesthetic context, uh, to use the characterization of uh, the sequences with a graph and allow the graph, allow the infinite um, path in the graph. You see, also. And uh, so, a final question that can be asked it is well, for which non family of words does there exist a set of substitution for which uh, the family of words is exactly the set of addict words obtained? So, as far as I seen it, we can have quite the same kind of substitutions, except that I do not have a, a look on the question, well, when I naturally have an infinite set to, for this question, does there exist a finite set? Well, I do not uh, have the answer, I do not uh, look at it. So um, this will stop here my, uh, my talk. Uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Gwenael? Um, maybe I do. Um, uh, could you possibly 
uh, extend this to instead of uh, substitutions to things that are, for example, fixed points of uh, transducers like Kolokoski? Um, I have not uh, looked at this kind of uh, this kind of generalization. Maybe it is possible. Maybe I can mention the, the work of uh, uh, Eddie Godel that I mentioned at the beginning of the talk when I give the definition of a stable set, which is uh, okay. So Eddie Godel uh, in 2010, where it is, that is at the be early be year beginning. Well, in, I, say, I say that uh, Eddie Godel in 2010 uh, define the notion of stable set. Actually, he, he defini defines the notion of stable set uh, in a more general context than the set of a set of substitutions. So it could be a certain uh, point to, to, to consider your question. But I don't think uh, he, he looks at the transduction themselves. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question, Dita Tarantova. I will ask, inspired by your examples, uh, it, uh, when the set of substitution is finite, is it true that the, the set stable set is closed under uh, the product topology if the set of substitution is finite? Or it's just because, because the balance word over binary alphabet, uh, eventually periodic and Sturmian is closed, it seems to, uh, if, I am right. Whether the, there is some connection between finiteness of the set of substitution and closeness under product uh, product topology. Uh, I'm not sure about this question, but I think that this question, your remark, is uh, relating to the question I ask uh, at the end of the second part, if I remember well. Uh, well, when I ask the question whether, whether the stable set is, um, is, is equal exactly the set of adic S R of uh, adic words, I think it is uh, maybe it has this uh, relating to this question that uh, uh, your, your remark of questions can be uh, related to. And so I, I have not looked at this question and, and I have no, no, no direct question, no, 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 no answer for this. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, any other questions? So if, if not, it says again, Edita Plantova, I would like to announce the postdoctoral position in Prague. I sent to chat, uh, post in the chat again. So please note it. I hope that I, oops. Okay. Okay, yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, Thank you all very much. Uh, thanks again to, uh, to Gwenael uh, for participating in the seminar. Um, I will see uh, all of you uh, next 